Can you make a comment on there and say, go to the other live? Yes. Do you want to put the, um, we'll put the computer right here. Okay. Oh, sure. I'll just unplug it when it's yeah, over here. Yeah, it's fine. I will, oh, uh, you're um, crooked. I will unplug it when it's over here. Yeah, it can be unplugged. Okay. Tell me if it's crooked or not. I think, <laughs> I'm just so, <tall. laughs> I'll just sit. I'm just gonna. I'm You're just, live, you know, so this is all gonna be on YouTube. All right. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, thank you. So we'll just wait for a few people to come in. Sounds good. So if you're watching the replay, go ahead and skip forward quite a bit. <laughs> There's 14 people watching. Oh, look at that. Hello, 14 people. So there's nine waiting in this one and re Perfect. Make a comment oh so gosh. we know it works. Oh, hello. Hello, West Virginia. Hello, West Virginia. And Oklahoma. This is going to be so fun. Hi, Kelly from Kentucky. This is my mother-in-law, Renee. She's going to hang out with us. And then Josh is over there, my husband. He is going to watch comments and stuff. You guys are coming in from all over the place. I only drove a half an hour away. You're not even that far. No, not even that far. Memphis. So today we're going to just cook dinner. Yeah, you can just say who's coming in. I'm sorry. I'm just welcoming you all from Wyoming. Hi, Cinta. Australia. Utah. Argentina. Singapore. Charles. What time is it there? So what we're going to do first, while people are just coming in, I thought it'd be fun to make a cocktail that we can enjoy while we cook dinner. And so I didn't, I'm just going to make up a recipe. I just looked in my pantry to see what we have and this is what we have. So this is what we're making. She has the best pantry, apparently. <laughs> I don't. Because <laughs> there's alcohol in it. Okay, so I just have some ice in a mixer. You can keep telling me who's Are coming in. Hi from Michigan. What is WNY? Is that West New York, Melissa? Where is that from? Where are you from? So this is just a little bit of spiced rum, nothing super fancy. Just poured a little oh bit in there. Oh my goodness, Charles, 8.30 in the morning. Oh my goodness, are you getting ready for work or are so you at work? Make a mimosa oh, it's or Saturday. Something. Yeah, it's, uh, is it Saturday or is it Friday with where you are? Oh, that's true. Hopefully it's, it's Saturday. This is... Um, Hi Debbie from Missouri. Almond liqueur. Is, is MS Missouri? No, MS is Mississippi, correct? You guys, this is so fun. I can't believe so many of you guys are here Hi, with Hi, Emily. Us. From, I see that Leah is from Sisters, Oregon, but then Emily Oh, no, that's is, my sister. But Emily Andy. is from Sisters. Say yeah. hi from Sisters. Oh, yeah, because they're camping. Okay, we're going to shake this cocktail. Okay. You guys are awesome. Melissa, hi from New awesome. York. 10.30 in the morning in Australia. Oh my gosh. So is it Saturday in Australia then? Or can you guys it? hear us okay? Can you let us know if you can hear us? That would be good to know, I guess, wouldn't it? It would be good. Well, I think they can because he answered what time it was. Oh, that's true. Oh, and your mom is on. Hi, Susan. We're just starting Wonderful. with a cocktail first. Yes. These are glasses that Renee actually bought me at Goodwill. They're really pretty. Yes, we do love to do our goodwill hunting, don't we? We do. I'm from Chicago. Oh, you know what I need? Near where I grew up. I'm from Northwest Indiana. So, Indianapolis. Yeah, I'm from, so Diana, I'm from DeMott, Indiana. So, a little ways away from you, but. We probably should have tried this before I poured it, but. Yes, it's Saturday morning in Australia. Oh my goodness. So yes, have mimosas for those of you. Oh, did I just spill on you? Yes, that's okay. <laughs> we haven't even had any yet. We're I already know, making a mess. I promise. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Oh, my gosh. This is great. Mm, oh, that's, that's good. A, so you can hear us a little grainy, but it might be that my phone. We'll try to make sure. I think because we're talking down, we'll make sure we talk. Oh, that's true. Okay. All right. So North Carolina and Texas and Miami. It's got to be hot down there. It's hot up here right now. Except it's temporary. At 10.30, so it's finally cooled off. So today we're gonna make chicken, or not chicken chucker, we're gonna make chucker, which is a bird, separate from chicken. Except, what, say that 10 times. <laughs> I've never, after you drink. 
I've never eaten chucker before. My husband went on a work like guided hunting trip and it's been sitting in my freezer for a year and a half and so I figured it would be fun to cook this with you guys. So what we're gonna do is make the chicken chucker pen, what is this? Where'd your recipe go? I don't know. I know it's a, I know it's Italian. Yeah, it's Italian. But if we pounded it, it would be a schnitzel, and we thought that was <laughs> good to make an Italian German. Yeah. So it's piccata, chicken piccata, but it's gonna be chucker piccata. So it basically, just has like white wine and garlic and lemon and capers. Capers, yeah. Yep. And then we're gonna make garlic mashed potatoes and peas from the garden. I actually went out there this morning and. You, what? You <laughs> I can't yourself, edit this. This is them. very hard. You shelved them, but I'm so glad. I shelved them. But I'm so glad she saved. She saved me. We we're gonna put this. Away. <laughs> <laughs> she saved me from having to shell the peas. Yeah, okay. Renee would have been so, sitting here shelling peas. Yeah. So first, let's go ahead and just get some lemon zested. Let's get something so, done. Yeah. So Chucker, I'll show you guys while she's doing that. I'll show you the little. I'm a little taller than Becky, so we always have to adjust the camera. Yeah. These are the little. These are the little chucker legs. See how tiny they are? So they're just tiny little game birds, but they're really tender and tasty, but they have, they're kind of a dark meat. I'm gonna just zest two lemons. I have in the description box the recipe, and um, if you're interested in that, when this is done, you can check out the recipe. I'm not gonna follow the recipe exactly. We're just gonna cook like I normally cook, and that's just the feel. So we're just gonna zest two lemons and cut them in half. Rebecca puts capers in tuna salad. I oh, that sounds good. good. Never yeah. Tried that. Capers are good. I think they're underrated and I don't think people use them enough. I don't use them enough. Oh, Diana, I've gotta try the onion top pesto. Actually, I'm just gonna go into her pantry and, <laughs> and grab some of hers. And have then some you don't even have to make it. I don't even have to make it. I get blessed by Becky's gifts. For you sure. actually can take, take one home. If you want to. Okay. Is that, yeah. how, you, is that how you're paying me tonight? Yeah. For and a dozen eggs. And a dozen eggs. That's so the best. So we're going to make garlic mashed potatoes too. And these are garlic cloves from garlic. I actually just went out into the garden to harvest. I was kind of like disappointed that I didn't have fresh garlic. But then I realized I have a bed of like 550 oh garlics out there. So we're just going to use fresh garlic. And this is, this is elephant garlic or regular? This is regular garlic. Okay. So we're just going to mince this and get this ready so that when we make the mashed potatoes, we'll be ready to go. Does anybody have any questions? We have high, oh, Erica wants some of those eggs. <laughs> oh yeah, we're I have plenty to share. Yeah, and I'm eating. always giving them away. Yes. So Renee did a really good tip for me. She grabbed the garbage can and has it right next to me so that I can just throw things right into the garbage. It's better than me holding out my hands and having her throw things into my hands. That's right. But yes. Oh, let's see, hi from the UK. Hi, Sharon. Trying to figure out what time it is for everyone. Here it is, well, 5.30. 5.36. Friday night, so. Yep. Hi, Alondra. Welcome from Indiana. One of my homies. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear chuckles. That's Josh and My bag. son is over there. The mystery Josh. He does exist. Trust me. He exists. But, yeah. All too real. All he says that I have to have 100,000 subscribers before he'll be on a video, so. When? Oh, yeah. when, not if, but when. Oh, thank you, Josh. So if you guys want to see what Josh really looks like, you're going to have to. He's actually friends. pretty funny. I think he's super cute, but I'm a little biased. I think he's cute too. Yeah. So we kind of have our prep. I have a little bit of uh, basil oh. here from. Oh, is there a question? Oh, that's okay. I'll show you the meat again. Go ahead. I'll show you, Eric. Keep talking. So if you, show the meat. if you just got here, we're making chucker piccata, which is an Italian dish. Sorry, my husband just bumped the camera. And I have a little bit of basil here, but I'm not going to cut that yet because it'll get kind of bruised and browned. And I've zested the zest of two lemons, and I've minced up probably four or five heads of garlic. These are pretty small heads of garlic because they're fresh. It is definitely different peeling a very fresh clove of garlic than smell it. peeling ones that have already dried. So this is basically all I have to do to get ready for the sauce, for the meat. So I'm going to put this over here. And move, the, and move the mother-in-law. You're fine. And now we're gonna go ahead and take care of the chick chucker, not chicken. We're gonna just call it chicker. Chick, there you go. 
Would you be willing to put a scoop of flour in here? Just now, one? the recipe calls for white flour, but I'm going to use whole wheat flour because I feel like the nuttiness is going to add something to the sauce. Just sure. It's just to coat the... Just to dredge it. Yeah. And then I'm going to add salt and pepper. I am kind of nervous to taste this meat. I've never had any game birds before at all. And it smelled a little bit gamey when I was taking it out of the package. But when it's sitting here, I can't smell it at all. So we're going to find out together whether it's good or not. And I've only ever made this in a crock pot. So and then I just covered it with cream of chicken soup. <laughs> so you, which when you have a game, I mean, that's kind of a cheater way to do it. So it'll be interesting to do it this way. But I'm from the Midwest. Everything you put cream of mushroom or cream of chicken soup on it, right? So, so this, you, but you make your own from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Yeah. So this pepper is fresh ground. I just blended it in the blender, and now my nose is all itchy after. Hi from Alaska, opening that. far north, like. Do you eat game meat in Alaska? I think that's all there is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So we're just going to take the meat and we're just going to dredge it in the flour. Oh, your dad is watching. Oh, sweet. Hey, dad. My whole family is camping at the coast right now on the Oregon coast. And we're not. Hi, Holly. I've never been to the UK. Have you been to the UK before? Yes. I've been to quite a few places, actually. In high school, I went on a trip to Wales, Ireland, Scotland, and England. So it says here, did your mom teach you how to cook all those recipes? Yes and no. My mom is a really good cook. She, she, um, but I kind of do cook a little bit more than, like, a few more things from scratch than she did. I grew up in the, um, don't, don't be offended, mom. <laughs> she's commenting. Yeah. Right? She's, she's making a note here. My mom <laughs> is Susan Jones and. Oh, your sister says that they're in sister. Yeah, sister's Oregon. Sister's not on the coast. Oh, that's right. You're in Sisters, Oregon. And uh, we kind of grew up in the fat-free era. And so we we didn't eat a lot of things that I cook because I do cook with a lot of butter and yeah. things like that. It's awesome. So things that make Sorry. things taste good. <laughs> <laughs> My mom used to call it boneless, skinless, tasteless chicken breasts. So, yeah. but she wasn't, my mom is a good cook. She's a really good cook. I hear you, Susan. I, we used to have a lot of chicken and green beans and salad. The stories I hear yeah. from Josh of when you, when you were our young. South Beach diet. South Beach diet. Oh my gosh, yes. We, we made the kids go through that too, so you're not alone. No, no. We were all nice and thin though. You were all Yeah. Well, you guys have good genes too. <laughs> Hi from Oregon, Tammy. Where are you at in Oregon? So I grew up in Portland, Oregon actually. So I do live in, um, you guys ask a lot where I live, and I live in uh, Washington. But I'm just north of Portland, Oregon, about 10 minutes. So southwest Washington. Okay, Ariel's from Atlanta. We have some family out there. Um, Josh's uncle Mark lives in Atlanta and, and cousins. So hello to you guys. I've only been to the airport in Atlanta. So I know that doesn't count. It does not count. That is not the best, <laughs> no. that is not the best part of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. So we're just taking this chucker, which is a really oh, small. Lebanon. I love Lebanon. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. Please continue. You I was just want... going to tell people if they're just joining us. We're just taking the chucker, which is a really small game bird, and just dredging it in a little bit of whole wheat flour and salt and pepper. And we're, the only reason I'm doing the whole wheat flour is because I thought the nuttiness would add a nice flavor. We'll make to North Carolina. Are you guys, if it's hurricane country, is it, is it hurricane season yet? Does that start like in October, Wendy? I'm going to wash my hands. And Amy's from Kansas, Massachusetts, and she loves your freezer meal videos. Yes. Oh, thank you. While she's not looking, I'm going to grab a couple. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like to do freezer cooking meals because I work full time and I have a big garden and I just don't have time during the week to cook like this. But on the weekends, I like to make fancier, more in-depth recipes. Obviously, you couldn't make this as a freezer meal because it would be kind of weird. Yeah. But that's what we eat during the week. So should we move the camera over? Sure. For sure. So I'm going to show oh, you what this looks like. And the dogs are actually um, in their room. So sorry about the lighting, but I just have a little bit of flour on each one of these. And then you guys, you guys are going to go flying. I'm going to move you so you can see what it looks like <laughs> on the stove. So hold on. 
I'm gonna try to go slow so you don't so get seasick. Nancy, where are you from in Michigan? Oh, cats out of the bag on that one, huh? What? <laughs> you guys got a flash of... <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Do you both need it? All right, that looks okay, good. Hurricane season is in yeah, June 1 through November 30. Well, hopefully you guys are all safe there. Uh, they saw you, Josh. They saw you. He's <laughs> real. Days. He exists. He's not like, what was that, what was that show where the guy was his... Home least, Improvement. Home Improvement, yes. Whatever his name is, that's Josh. Oh, Bay City, yeah. So we lived for many years in, in the UP. Josh is a, a Uper. Oh, hey there. Oh, hey there. Oh, dear. He was born in Houghton. Actually, Hancock. My mom's from Michigan, too, but I That's can't remember the, the city she's from. Susan, where are you from in Michigan? So I just put some butter in a pan because we're going to cook the chucker in this pan. And I'm going to also put some olive oil in here. And I turned the stove on medium. This is a butter bowl. My mother-in-law also gifted me this, too. And what it is is it's a dish with a cup. And this little dish has water in it. And a way to have soft butter all the time that doesn't go bad is in this little dish because the water keeps the water keeps the oxygen off the butter. So when you use it, you just turn it over like that. And so you know you can get those for five dollars at Goodwill, but they're thirty dollars if you buy them online. So another Goodwill hunting tip there. We do like our Goodwill hunting. We do. I have Josh, I have some more canning jars in my car if you want to grab them. <laughs> Josh is sick of uh, the canning jars, but the more the better. <laughs> I was thinking about doing a reel that is like, you know the one where it's like, it'll never be enough, it'll never be enough, because my husband's like, when is enough enough on the canning jars? And it's never going to be enough. Oh, Sandy, what happened? Did, so you got a reminder, so at least you're here. Sorry about the little technical difficulties. Sandy, so this is the first time we're going live, and... We're making it up as we go along. <laughs> so I had to start a brand new one. So next time, hopefully, it'll be a little bit better. So what we're doing is we're cooking chucker. I have in this pan some butter and olive oil, and we're going to turn that on a medium heat. We're also making peas. I shelled these. Where'd they go? They're over there by the camera stand. I shelled these peas today. I actually just harvested these out of the garden. And man, are shelling peas a labor of love. Spoiler alert. Uh, if you, I guess, watch the harvest video, you'll know that I am not going to grow these next year, I don't think, because this took me probably two hours. <laughs> so I shelled them, I blanched them in some boiling water for two minutes, and then I put them in ice water, and now they're in this bowl, and we're going to cook these up today. They're going to be really good, though. Yeah, especially when you think like a, a bag of frozen peas from Walmart is 99 cents, right? So like, Right, the, the bang for your buck. And when you're throwing away all the shells... I'm just thinking about how much waste that is. And if I grow, I'm gonna grow peas next year, but I'm gonna grow sugar snap peas. Oh, Minnesota, where are you guys at? I see Sandy and Shawnee are both from Minnesota. Where are you guys oh, from? Awesome. So I'm gonna to do lots of, I'm sorry, don't interrupt me while I'm talking. Oh, you're fine. Don't interrupt you. Excuse me. Yeah, so we used to go fishing a lot in Minnesota. So I'd love to know where you guys are from. So these are some canned potatoes that I canned last year, and we're gonna turn them into mashed potatoes, which I've never done, so we're gonna do this together, and we'll see if we like it. I've used these potatoes in a couple different ways, and I've liked them that way, but we'll see if we like it this way. So I'm gonna go drain them. Yeah, so Becky, a quick question for you. Are you, are you buying vegetables, or do you st are you still getting, are you getting everything from your garden? Are you still buying some vegetables, aren't you? Um, the last grocery haul, I did not buy any vegetables. Did you hear me? Can you repeat that for them? Did you guys hear that? So she buys, I wasn't listening, I was reading comments, so you have to repeat it yourself. <laughs> She's draining the vegetables. The potatoes. She'll fish, oh, the potatoes. She'll come back. So I think she's, I'm just going to make, I'm going to ad-lib on that one. I think she is buying some vegetables, but most she's able to go from her pantry or from her freezer. So we'll go from there. And did the chickens eat the pea pods? They're not really. That, see, that's the thing that was kind of disappointing is I gave the pea pods to the chickens and they kind of peck, they are pecking at it a little bit. These are the potatoes that I just rinsed, but not a ton. So, and I just realized I did that wrong. Oh, well, I'll talk about it in a second. So, am I distracting you? No, you're fine. <laughs> oh, Amy, I'm her mother in law. This is Renee, my mother in law. My husband is here with us. He is watching comments in the other room, but I can see him. And then, so what I was going to do. 
but we're just not going to do it, is I was going to warm up some heavy cream and I was going to cook the garlic in this pan before I put the potatoes in here. But you know what? I still can do that. Do you want me to help? No, I think You have extra pans. We'll put those back in there. Let's see, did you ever find out you if your chicken who ate the egg influenced the others? Did one of your chickens? No, eat? that's a great question. So my chicken, I haven't had any chicken eaters lately. You guys all gave me some really good advice. What you guys recommended, so we're just putting heavy cream in here and I'm gonna put the garlic in here and turn this on, is to remove the eggs sooner. So I was kind of going a couple days without removing eggs, which was not ideal. I, that was just me being lazy, I guess. And then um, I gave them more oyster shells and I'm trying to give them some different toys and activities and ways to snack on different things so that they're not as bored. So I haven't had a chicken eat anything since then. There's a warning that front burner is on, don't burn yourself. I know. <laughs> we like to live life on the edge around here. My Thanks, husband's Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have the heavy cream and the garlic heating up the and kind of cooking this a little bit before we put the potatoes in. And we're gonna go ahead and start pan frying the chucker in here. So Karen, just to recap, she's making some pan fried chucker, which is a game bird. You wanna get closer so oh. here, you may be a little better. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so Karen, she's making some pan fried chucker. Right there, some little game birds. She's gonna make some nummy mashed potatoes, and then she's gonna make some keys. Nummy. Right? Nummy. Yes. yes. The title. Look down below for the recipe for <laughs> nummy potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the recipe for this is in the description below, and the recipe is with chicken. So we are using chucker, but oh, can you get it, Josh? Yeah, it's, it's on scratchpantry.com. Okay. Uh, so the recipe should be on there. So I'm going to cook these for about two to three minutes on each side and I want them to get a nice golden brownness and I want them to cook all the way through. So this should go pretty quick because they're so small. I'm going to go wash my hands. Hey, uh, hey Josh, how many chickens do you guys have now? We have 11, right? Yeah. 11? And how many eggs are you getting a day? Like nine. Nine eggs. So who's the slacker? Are you <laughs> I think they take turns. They take <laughs> We make Notice cocktails. We're having we're having chucker and not the chickens that aren't laying the eggs. So oh no, they will never be eaten. Right? That's a good point. Yeah. No. Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Josh just said they won't be eaten by us. So I wanted to get the other um, the chicken the chucker breasts here. These are the thighs and legs. I've never eaten chucker before, and we are going to be eating this together for the first time. So, so I got a question for you. Yep. Yeah. No, I don't, but um, Debbie asked, why do you blend, why did you blend your peas when you're going to cook them? Because that's what they say to do. <laughs> they. So I was going to freeze these. Um, I'm giving you a little bit of, I, I filmed a video on it today, but I, I was going to freeze all these peas and put them in the freezer, and you're supposed to blanch your vegetables because there's an enzyme in vegetables, apparently, that can break vegetables down, so if you blanch them, it kills mm -hmm. the enzyme. But I don't usually do that because I sometimes skip steps. But I was going to do that today and because I wanted, I was going to do both. So I blanched these ones and then I still have a whole pile of peas that I didn't get to yet. And I was going to not blanch those and see if I could tell a difference and yeah. if it's worth the blanching. Because when I watch YouTube videos, people are very divided on it. A lot of people do it and a lot of people don't. So I wanted to come up with my own opinion. Sorry, this is kind of loud. Ricardo says he's got the same pan and everything is thick. I just want to say that there's so much butter. This, this whole kitchen smells like butter. It is pretty amazing. So I think that's the key to make it not stick is just to use a whole butter bell worth of butter. There's only like two tablespoons of butter in there. I don't know, but it smells really good. So you want your meat. I'm going to hold this up. Let's see, does chucker have to be cooked through? Yeah, so we, it's pull, this chucker is poultry, so it has to be cooked through thoroughly. So we want to make sure it's... I'm really looking for a golden brown. That's why I was showing you that. When a recipe says you want something brown, you don't just want it to color brown. You actually want it caramelized. Like, so that's why I was showing you that, because that one's looking caramelized. I need my splatter guard. I don't know where my splatter guard is. You don't have one of these, you need to get yourself
help one of these. That will save you a lot of cleanup time. This is so fun having you guys in the kitchen. When I was getting ready for this, I was telling Renee when she got here that it's like having people over, but I only had to clean my kitchen. I didn't have to vacuum my living room or clean my bathroom or anything. Let's take a look at this. So have any of you guys cooked canned potatoes before? And if so, how did you cook them? Oh, it smells good. Hi, Justin. This is, I'm Renee. I'm Becky's mother-in-law. Josh's mom. And yes, she is an amazing cook. Absolutely. So when you're pan frying something, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a pan sauce with this. And when you see those little bits of brownness that are sticking to the bottom of the pan, you actually want that. That's, a, that's something you want to happen because that's called a fawn. And that's where a lot of that like umami, like rich, meaty flavor is in. It's actually in the caramelized brownness. And so we're going to make a pan sauce when we're done with this with lemon and white wine. And oh, we need to get the wine out. Oh. It's in the door. Okay. And butter and capers in this. So, this is here. Sorry. There's a lot of doors. Right here. And my hair's falling out, so I gotta fix my hair. Well, so I have a question for you. So, um, from Sharon, you make a lot of sauces. Do you also make condiments? And which ones do you make the most of? I do. I have a couple of videos on YouTube. Actually, I made rhubarb barbecue sauce this year. And I guess that's the only one that I filmed a YouTube video on, but I plan to film a YouTube video on ketchup and mustard, because I make homemade ketchup and mustard too. All right, I think some of these are done. Do you need, a, do you need me to get something for you to put it in? No, I, I got it out. Of course you do. Yeah, her I didn't get everything out. Her ketchup is really good. I have to, I have to say that too. Yes. So let's check our cream here. Yeah, oh, I have, the, the too. I have the wrong stove pan on. That's what someone was saying. They put a front burner on. Oh, that's that front burner. And then I'm going to tent this with a little bit of foil, and then we're going to move on to the chicken, our chucker breasts. It is a little blurred. Did we, did we splatter on the screen? No, I think, um, I think it's the lighting. It's, no, it's the Wi-Fi. Oh, sorry if it's a little grainy. So I'm going to add a little bit more oil. Yeah, it says we're blurry and out of sync. Sorry about that. The Wi-Fi oh. is a little off. Sorry about that. I don't know what to do about oh, that. Oh, it says better. Oh, good. So what we're doing now is adding the chucker breast. Oh, Josh, you gotta open the door because the fire alarm's gonna go off. Oh, <laughs> it's getting pretty toast or oh, smoky yeah. in here. Can hey, you Josh, see the smoke up there? Josh is checking connection. Josh is my personal IT department. He is our whole family. I know he, help, he helps us all out. He's able to help us even long distance. My sister lives in Boise, and he's able to help her out too. So he's the um, pretty amazing. He runs the IT department at his company, and so that's really the only reason I can have a YouTube channel because he does a ton of my back end stuff that I don't know how to do. And he's super cute. He's like, when I ask him about questions or like about editing or whatever, he's like, I don't know how to do that, but he at least knows like what menus to click to then get to what I need to do because I don't even know like what menus I should be clicking. Well, it's a pretty good trade. I mean, you feed him. Yeah, that's true. Like, the least he can do is help you. <laughs> that's true. Sorry, Josh. No offense. <laughs> By the way, this drink, I don't know if you want to add this recipe down below. Oh, but we can make our... I, 
it's really, really good. So we're, I made a little cocktail at the beginning while people were still coming in, and it has spiced rum, um, almond liqueur. I don't know the name of that. I can't remember technically this Italian. Corona. This is, I'm just, I mispronounce it. Bucerono? Yeah. It's like, like, um, what is it? Like maraschino cherry flavor, like almond extract flavor, and then orange juice. Almoretto, that's what it is. Yeah. Almoretto. So yes, the cream is warm. a cocktail. It's been a long day. So it's I Friday night. It. It's Friday night. Kick off the work week. Start my weekend. So we're going to put the potatoes here. I just left the skins on when I canned them because I have skins with my potatoes. And then I'm going to just warm them through because they're already cooked. When you pressure can potatoes, you can them for 90 minutes. So they should be soft. What kind of potatoes are they again? These are huckleberry potatoes. Huckleberry? That sounds made up. I know. They, then I'm just going to put the lid on that and let that warm through. I am not drinking all the wine. I promise. Oh, gosh. Oh, these are easy to be burned. I'll save some of the, I'll have some wine with the, with the chucker when we sample it later. Yeah, she does remind us of the Pioneer Women. I mean, she's amazing what she puts together. Oh, wow, it's freaky. Yeah. Now, if you want to feel like a really good cook, cook, cook bleh, excuse me. <laughs> if you want to make yourself feel like a good cook, start cooking with wine because it will bring your cooking to the next level. It's, it really is game changer. And I buy cheap wine. This was at Costco. And I think I spent like $4.50 for this bottle. And I haven't tasted it yet. We'll have to open it up and see if it's any good. But usually when you cook with it, it's not too bad. Yeah. And yes, I think, we are, I think we are mashing the potatoes, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. And I think this is done. Oh, I bet the canned potatoes would be good for potato salad. It would be so easy. And then they'd be already cool. You wouldn't have to cook them and then cool them. That's so I'm going to take this pan off the heat because it's way too hot. And these are done. That was fast. That was really fast. I think I had the pan a little too hot and I was not paying attention. It smells good. I don't know why you were distracted. <laughs> so those brown bits are what you want. This is why when you're going to make a pan sauce, you don't want to use a Teflon pan. You want that. That's not burnt. That's flavor right there. So a little bit of sticking is good. A little bit of sticking is actually what you're going for. So I'm just wiping off. Yeah, Barbara, I can't keep up with her either. That's why I'm seated. That's why you're seated. <laughs> I have to look at my sure, recipe because I can't remember. Are we sure that they're cooked through? Did we want to check the temperature or did you want to pierce one to make sure that the juices run clear? I think I overcooked them. But that's a really good point, Tiffany. Let's see. So James is Splorch Joshua. Is that his nickname? Yeah, Sporch Porch. Sporch he probably doesn't want us to say that. But. Hi, Sandy from Minnesota. Yeah, they're done. They're done. Yeah, so we're going to put the recipe for the dish in the description. Yeah, the recipe's in the description, and I'm also going to put those back in here once the sauce is made. All right, so we've got, I'm just holding this off the pan so it doesn't burn, and I'm just looking at the recipe what the next part we need to do. We need to just add the rest of the ingredients. So we're going to add some white wine. We're going to add a cup of white wine. That's a good point, Tiffany. Yeah, the pan was really hot, but I think they're, they're so small. I'm sure they're cooked through. Oh, yeah. I'm guessing a bottle of wine is about four cups, so we're going to add that much. Jacinta, oh, 2 a.m. in Ireland. Oh, my, oh goodness. my goodness. You are up late. So this is, this is why you want that fond in the bottom of your pan. That's not clean. Sharon, I agree. She is a beautiful soul. I'm super blessed oh, to have you. her as my daughter-in-law. Thank she you. That's best. too sweet. You guys are so sweet in the comments. I just have to say a huge thank you. It's super humbling when I read your guys' comments. I'm, I don't deserve them. So you can see how the brownness, those brown bits, I don't know if you can see that, but... Let me see if I can show Is that deglazing? When, yes. When do you think? So you're deglazing it? That's okay. exactly what I'm doing. So now the brown bits are now in that white wine, and that's exactly what we want. And we're going to add the lemon juice. Oh, so Jessica, so we made some chuckers, which are some little game hens. So she just finished cooking those. She's making the sauce. Becky does 20 things at once, so let me see if I can keep up. She's making the sauce. She's got some potatoes heating up, and she's going to add some 
garlic and something else, oh, cream to the potatoes. We've got some peas that she shelled. For how, how long did it take you to shell all those peas? Oh my gosh, like two hours. Two hours. It was embarrassingly long how long it took. So I'm just putting the juice of two lemons in here. Oh, Wendy's married to a chef. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So he might be a, yeah, don't watch my videos give, then. Give some tips below. Yes, please. But yeah, Becky's our, our chef for our family, definitely. And then I'm gonna oh, put Argentina. the- Argentina, wow. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. What season, is it winter down there for you guys right now? Oh, yes, having a daughter-in-law like her. And you saw the other video with the eggs, with the shelf, that's my other daughter. Oh yeah. Lacey. Let's so see if I can show you guys. You've probably seen this, there we go. Have you guys seen this in any of my videos? My, my sister-in-law and I made this together. That was super fun. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. I'm pretty lucky. I have a pretty awesome family on both sides. Yes, I love Becky's family too, just saying. And not just because you're all watching. <laughs> Actually, most of my cooking stuff is from either my husband's family or, or my husband. So they're really supportive in my cooking endeavors. Well, we enjoy the food. Josh, <laughs> so I'm putting about a half a cup of capers in here. I'm just kind of draining them a little. Not a half a cup, a quarter of a cup. Oh, so do you ever prepare freezer meals for other people? Um, I only have done that once. I, my uh, friend, she had a baby, and I went over to her house, and we made a bunch for her. And that's the only time I've done that. Oh, so a question about the eggs. So yeah. Can you explain why they can be on the counter and not be in the fridge? Because they've not been washed. In the U.S., we wash our eggs when you buy them at the grocery store, like the FDA or whoever it is, mandates that eggs have to be washed. And when you wash an egg, you wash off a natural preservative coating that the hen puts on the egg so that the eggs could be outside for a long time without them going bad. And so when you wash that off, then the egg becomes porous and you have to refrigerate it. So that's why they're not refrigerated because those eggs haven't been washed. Thank you. And you're welcome. Pilar says it's 46 degrees Fahrenheit in Argentina. Holy cow. So, that is the opposite. We did have our turn, but you know, but if you can come up and visit us and yeah. we can get, because it's going to be in the 90s, I think, this weekend. So. Yes. And we don't have air conditioning in this house, so I was thinking um, it would be good to do a freezer cooking meal, like a, a summer one, like how to keep your house cool, because doing things like this doesn't keep your house super cool. Yeah. So what we're going to do is reduce this sauce down by half. And I think that's all the ingredients for that. Let's it check on the potatoes. smells so good. Oh my goodness. The potatoes are starting to cook <laughs> or warm. They're already cooked. I'm going to put it on this stove. No, this is how I do it. I just kind of think and go as I go along. So when you watch my edited videos, I edit all this part out. But this is the best because <laughs> this is the real life. Right? Yeah, this, this is, is real life. Out. So now I'm going to go ahead and put a pot on the back here, and I'm Aww. just going to put some butter back here, and we're just going to warm the peas because they've already been kind of blanched. Sharon, that's sweet. Yes, she's going to be able to feed <laughs> children running around with full bellies. Yeah, yeah she's got yeah, butter. Sweet. Right now, the chickens are the babies. We have three dogs too. Three dogs. I have I have how many grand dogs? We have six. I have six grand dogs. Yeah. Love them. So these are the peas that I spent two or three hours, I don't know how long, shelling. And we're gonna get these. I blanched them and I just have well that's a lot of butter. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're just gonna put these in here and just cook those and kind of warm them through. So about the air conditioner, so they bought this house, what, two or three years? ago and it just didn't come with central air so we bought this house in November of 2019 and the thing about because we live in the Pacific Northwest it doesn't get really hot and it doesn't get really cold so it's not like Texas or Arizona where you would you have to have air conditioning you don't have to have air conditioning here it's just uncomfortable for a few weeks or a month or two out of the year and so their older homes don't always have central air and this house was built in 85 I think and just didn't have central air. So we've looked into putting it in, but it's gonna cost like 20 grand, so. Yeah. Other like this video and share it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one day, hopefully, we'll put central air. We do have like wall units because it's hard to sleep when it's warm, but. Yeah, so, um, so more ideas. People want some more ideas about how to cook 
without the, the stove and the oven. I know you use your Traeger a lot, you use your Instapot a lot. So yeah. Some more cooking ideas maybe for that? Like yeah, I'll, I'll do a whole, I think I'll do a whole like freezer, freezer cooking meal or like something like that. I think that would be fun. Yeah. But the Traeger, the biggest thing is cooking outside and someone left a comment actually and they said they put their crock pot outside oh. with an extension cord on their in their backyard on their on their table and then they just eat dinner out there and i thought that was a really good idea yeah, probably camping too yeah that's true yeah cool and then oh yeah cook outside using a, you can use a camp stove yeah even using i know on my old girl had like a little um a stove burner on it too so that's an idea and i don't think becky makes her own butter no, I don't have a cow. She doesn't have a cow yet. <laughs> I can't have a cow at this house. I was going to say, I don't know, do you make, can you make butter from goat's milk? Probably. No, no. I don't think so. Uh, Josh is like, no. I don't think Never I, mind, never mind. I don't think you can make butter from goat's milk unless you have a fat separator because goat's milk is naturally homogenized. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, don't be nervous about the Instapot. Insta pot. I mean, I can cook with Oh, it. yeah. Yeah, so Becky, they want some more videos on how to cook with the Instant Pot. Oh, perfect. Yeah. But definitely, yeah. I use it all the time. The Me too. The thing is great. And you know what's really awesome about the Instapot that I just learned? And I, the video hasn't come out, but I talk about it in that video, where I, in the past, up until like six months ago, I only used the Instapot to cook like one ingredient things, like chicken broth, beans, mm -hmm. rice, just like a one pot thing. Or the meat, you know, like cook um, the roast in it or whatever. But I've just started, and Josh, I think he really likes them. I've been making like whole meals in the Instapot. Two of them, one is jambalaya and a couple of pasta recipes where you literally throw everything into the pot. And it's a literal one pot thing, and it's amazing. And I'm just starting to learn that, and I was wanting to make some videos for you guys about it. Well, Rebecca, I never thought about making cornbread on the, on the gas grill. That's a good idea. Oh, Like you do yeah. camping sometimes on that, but that's a good idea. I'm going to taste this. And then I have a question while you're tasting that too. Just mm. what have you enjoyed the most about making videos? Getting to know you guys in the comments. You guys are so sweet and you guys give me such great ideas. I feel like half my ideas come from you. Yeah. So that's been really fun. Yeah. And the other thing, it's fun to see the progress. Because I think when you're in it all the time, you don't always see like the garden growing because it's slow. But I went back and was looking at some of the older garden videos and it's like amazing how far things have come. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I started the channel was because I am not a note taker. I have a very hard time, I'm not a writer. And so I figured I could document my garden via YouTube. Yeah. It would be a better medium for me. It's been fun. It's yeah. Been fun. So I have a question for um, so Erica. You said you could use butter, make butter out of milk and use in the mixer. Do you have to have? Is it whole milk or do you use like heavy, heavy cream? cream? Yeah. Okay. Tuning in from Lake County, Oregon. Hello. And Tiffany says hit the like button, everyone. Oh yeah. yes. Please. Thank you, like, Tiffany. Like, subscribe. Share the video. Share the video. Share the love. You know I can't find my potato masher, so we're gonna use this. There you go. Oh yeah, these are, yeah, I probably put too much since, cream uh, in this. Definitely getting back into baking. Of course, like, if I was in Argentina right now, it would be easier to be baking, but. Oh yeah. Yeah, some of, I think I really enjoyed the freezer meals too, even though it's just the two of us. My husband Dave and I were empty nesters, but it's been, just watching her do that makes me inspired too. Well, it's just the I, two of us too. In fact, I got a freezer. I got a deep freezer because of you. Yeah. And a dehydrator. I'm a bad influence. She got the nice dehydrator. I am. She is a very bad influence. I'm very covetous of her dehydrator. She got the 15 tray Excalibur. Mine's only, wait, is it 15 or 9? Mine is. Mine's it's big. It's 7. Oh, really? Do I have the same size as you? I don't remember. No, you don't, because I have the 5. Oh, then the 5. I got one. I don't think I so. I got whatever you got, but yeah. Whatever well, you recommended to put the link in. I think I put the, the nicer one yeah. on the recommendation because it's bigger. Now these potatoes are a little bit chunky. I think I put a little bit too much cream in here, but we'll cook oh, it off. So making some cilantro pesto. You mentioned, are you going to make oh, some yeah. cilantro pesto? I would, but my cilantro um, went to seed. Oh, so you're going to get coriander from that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these peas are done. So I'm going to turn that heat off and I'm just going to let them sit here. They've been buttered. I do need to salt them. I wish I could find my potato masher. Let's see. Is it in one of the doors? <laughs> it, could, it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. Oh, it's right here. Oh, look at that. Okay. My grandma would have said if it was a snake, it would have bit me. 
Yeah, so um, Erica says the heavy cream, and the, um, we can make heavy cream for the um, butter. The butter doesn't burn the pan like store-bought butter. Oh, that really? Is, that is good to know. Yes, and so um, Jenny from Maryland, yes, she's going to be making some rhubarb jam. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think you made some, did you make some strawberry rhubarb jam? No, because I ran out of strawberries. Okay, okay. And turn that off. So that sauce is reduced by half. So I'm just going to set that there for a minute while I finish the rest of the meal components because this meal is basically done. I only have to add one more ingredient to the. I only have to add one more ingredient to the sauce and then it's done. It smells so good. Oh my goodness. It does smell good. So these canned potatoes were a little bit not quite as soft as I thought they were going to be. So it's going to be a little bit chunky. Mashed potatoes? This is the best. Well, there you go. Then you know they're real. That's true. Yeah, these are not box mashed potatoes. No. Any questions? You can keep it up really well. I answered them for you. Oh, thank you, Josh. Oh, thanks, Josh. Okay, so what we need to do is taste everything because you have to adjust for seasonings as you go, especially if you don't follow recipes exactly, which I hardly ever do. Thank you, Wendy. Are you, so you guys are enjoying this live cooking? Because I think I think Becky doesn't need to spend so much time editing because I think she's fun. <laughs> she's a lot of fun live. So let us know if you like this live video. That's a great question, Renee. Yeah. Hi from BC, Canada. So that tastes really Hi, good. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. I was going to put Parmesan mm -hmm. cheese in there. Parmesan in your mashed potatoes is so good, but I can't find my Parmesan, which is weird because I really thought I had some. I'll probably find it tomorrow morning. I was saying to her, Oh, that's that salt. I watch, I was watching her video. I'm like, I know I saw you make extra because you, you, I did. You did. I did. In that last video, if you watched, I made extra. Do you deliver? No. <laughs> Uber Eats doesn't come to my house, unfortunately. So these might be a little salty because I just salted them twice, but. A quick question about the baked oatmeal when you make it. Oh, yeah. So can you use instant oats or do you have to use steel cut? You use uh, rolled oats. Rolled oats. Oh. Wow. Yeah. You. Uh, I think instant would get really um, gummy, and I don't know if steel cut <laughs> oats would get cooked all the way through. Yes, cream cheese and the mashed potatoes. Would oh be yeah, really cream good. cheese is good too. Put a lot of cream cheese in, and yes, Wendy's on the way over. All right. Oh we'll nice. See we'll see you in five minutes, Wendy. We have plenty of food. Me too. I invited uh, Renee's husband over, but he was had better plans, so. He's going on a motorcycle ride. It's a good day for it. It's actually. a very good day. Okay, these potatoes look really good. Let's give them yeah, a taste. Ma Marie, I mean, yeah, she she said she put all the cheese in the food processor and, and froze it. Did I put it in the freezer? I think she froze it too. Sure. <laughs> We're all trying to help her. We're all going to know her. We're going to know her kitchen you, better than she does soon. You ground up the butter. <laughs> you uh, put it through the processor and put it in the freezer. So Jessica, we are in Southwest Washington, Mystery just salt. north of Portland, Oregon. Okay, those mashed potatoes taste really good. They're not too salty. I thought they might have been because I just salted them twice. Actually, that's hot. So I'm gonna taste these peas. Yeah, do more live stream. It's it's fun to see, isn't it? She's doing a great job, and I'm appreciating it because when I'm watching the videos, I don't get to smell all the food. Mm. Not that she's gonna invite me, but if she gives me a cocktail every time, I. <laughs> You're I welcome over. Here. I like having people over here, and it's kind of been a long time since, so it's nice. So I'm just peppering the, the peas. So Becky, have you had any disasters in the kitchen that you want to share? I know we had to open up the doors oh, yeah. in case there was smoke, but... Um, I can't think of like one that's catastrophic other than just like routine things. Um, but no fires. No fires. Fire. No major fires. I do set the uh, smoke alarm off. I'm actually really surprised it didn't go off today. And there's like the joke, like, how do you know the dinner's done? The smoke alarm, or smoke alarm goes off. That's the timer. Yeah, that's the timer. Okay, so we are basically done with dinner almost. We just have to finish this sauce. Oh, that's on way too high. Yeah, so she's going to, can you make at least one batch of cilantro pesto? Maybe you can, maybe buy some at the farmer's Oh, market? you mean like make a video on it? You know, you can buy oh, some yeah. cilantro. I could, um, I just don't have any in the garden where it's gone, it's gone to seed. And so I could buy cilantro and make that. Absolutely. Yeah. But you could, but you could borrow some of mine because I think I might have too much. Because I, I live up a little higher. So things, oh, that's good. I even, I even have a little test garden because of Becky. I don't have time for this. I've got two raised beds because of Becky. I kind of feel guilty about it. 
Okay, so that's very citrusy, so I'm gonna add a little pepper to kind of counteract that. A little bit of Denise, heat. did you try the onion greens pesto? Did you try some of that? A couple of you guys have. That's great. I feel so honored when you guys make my recipes. It's like, wow. Ashley's in the chat, by the way. Ashley? Yeah, your friend Ashley. Oh, hey, Ashley, congratulations. She just sold her house, so I'm gonna put nice. a tablespoon of butter in right now, and we're gonna mix this in. <laughs> Denise said, yes, awesome sauce. Yes. <laughs> so Ashley just sold her house, and they bought a trailer. Which is pretty cool. So you're gonna do some traveling or like is that tiny house living? You probably did really well on your house I'm assuming. Which is pretty awesome. So what we're doing is we're emulsifying this butter into this sauce. So a pan sauce typically that you would when you make pan sauces like after you cook a steak or chicken or whatever your meat is and you want to make a sauce with the drippings is you use an acid, you could use wine, you could, you could use chicken broth, that's a substitution. And then typically you add lemon juice and then you emulsify your butter into it and that's what thickens the sauce actually and creates the sauce. But you don't wanna put all the butter in at once or your sauce could break. Which means the fat and the water, like the water soluble stuff separates. Which Okay, so a fifth wheel, that's good. Oh yeah, so Tammy. Oh cool. Yeah, so it's hard to go down from like cooking for many just to a couple. I know going from a family of, you know, six down to two of us has been kind of a challenge, but I try to I try to freeze things, but like Becky says in a lot of her videos and she has leftovers throughout the week. That's why I cook like we have a family of six because <laughs> I really only cook two times or three times a week, usually. Yeah. And that's how I do that. And then we can have just like a simple meal, like a salad or something that you don't have to cook that doesn't isn't gonna give you leftovers um, if we are kind of sick of what we're eating. So Corinda, for the green onion tops, where, oh, yeah. if you don't grow them, would you be able to just get regular green onions at the farmer's market? Would that work just as well? Sometimes when you go to the farmer's market and you buy fresh onions, the, the green tops are still on it. Um, or you could try it with just green onions and then just do it with the green onion part, not the the white part of the onion, so it's not too strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if I did that, I probably would cut it with another herb because I feel like green onions are a little bit more potent than just the onion tops. Right. So Cece, yes, she uses her iPhone to make videos. Oh yeah. That's her regular iPhone. Yep, all my videos are done on my iPhone and I stole a tripod from my husband. So <laughs> he, he's like, don't use my tripod, and then I use it. And there it is. And he won't use it because it's in the garden too much, but it was yeah. one that he would record himself golfing so he could like perfect his swing. It's for the best. It's for the best. Oh, it's for the best. He's, he's so good now he doesn't need to. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, I, right. I need to turn this up. I have this way too low. So Courtney, I'm sure at the end she'll tell us all to have a great day. Oh. So, yeah, because you always end with have a great day. So have a great day. make sure we, end, we close with that. This is a cocktail we made with um, amaretto, spiced rum, and orange juice to start, and it's pretty good. Did you try the wine? Did, did I try the wine? I'm, I'm still drinking this. Oh. <laughs> Move on to the wine. It's a, it's a Pinot Grigio. I've had that before. That's just that's from Costco. It's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna get some dishes out because our dinner is almost done. So I'm gonna get right behind you. Yeah, the pesto is definitely a great video, so share that with people. And, you know, Becky, I have a question for you. Yeah. So I have my wee little garden, and I have all these, like, radish tops and broccoli leaves. Oh, yeah. Not that I would make pesto out of any of those, but what would you recommend doing with those extras? Well, the broccoli leaves, you can cut up and you can dehydrate them and just add them to, like, if, if you want to add, I dehydrate a ton of kale, which I'll show you guys, and... You, when you put that in like any pasta sauce or any anything like in, almost anything I cook I'll put a handful of dried mm -hmm. kale or you could use dried broccoli leaves and you're just adding more nutrition to your meal I ran out of that a few months ago that's why you haven't seen that in any of my freezer cooking videos if um, I had that you would see me add kale powder kale to everything yeah because I have my broccoli crumbs about this big but the whole plant is monstrous and it feels like a lot of wasted Space just for one broccoli crumb, but that's a good idea. I'll try it since I have a what five tray <laughs> Excalibur. I think yours is nine. I really, I think, I think your, I think it so. might be nine. 
Because I think I linked to the bigger one because if I was to buy I one, did, I, I did get a bigger one. Okay, we're putting another. We're putting another oh, tablespoon of butter in there. Cauliflower leaves. That's a good idea too. Which one? Cauliflower leaves. Oh yeah, any brassica because broccoli and cauliflower and you can use cabbage leaves too, like the ones. Cabbage leaves too. Yeah, like the ones on the outside that. Um, so I've done that a few times. The cabbages, as they're growing, they haven't formed like the cabbage ball yet. And you can take a couple of the outside leaves and eat those. Okay. Or give them to your chicken is actually what I've been doing. I don't have chickens, but I can bring them to yours. There you go. They're my grand, my grand chickens. chickens. <laughs> oh, by the way, there was a message saying Happy Father's Day to Josh. Oh. Uh, from the pups. Happy, yeah. Ooh, candle chips. Oh, that would be yes. Yeah, I've never made those. I need to make those. Do you add? A, do you, so this is from um, Wind It in the Honey. I like that. So do you just add a little olive oil to that before you put it in the dehydrator? We I ran out of spoons. <laughs> I have no spoons. So we need to taste this. Yeah, that sounds really good. We don't even notice that it's kale, then, right? <laughs> just cover it with garlic and parmesan. So I'm calling a little bit of an audible because this is pretty sour. I think I should have only added the juice of one lemon. And so I'm gonna add just a little bit of cream to add a little bit of, you know, no, I'm not gonna do that because that'll curdle actually. We're gonna add a little sugar. Thank you, Tiffany. Yes, we all believe she's gonna get to 100,000 subscribers very soon. Oh my gosh, you guys, you're she too much. The best. I'm a little biased. So oh, sorry. Oh, so for kale, yes, olive oil and other spices. I'm going to make kale chips this year. I've never made them before, but I've eaten them and they're so good. So we're just adding sugar because I added too much sour and I need to balance that and a way to do that is with sugar. That sounds good. Yeah. Hi, Kate. Good evening. And some people are watching in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh. You guys are so awesome. This is fun. I'm yeah. enjoying it. This is a really good excuse to um, try new things. Uh, so a lot of you guys, I need to take, I think this is done. A lot of you guys have told me that I cannot throw that cow tongue away that I have in my freezer. And I haven't, because I said I think in that freezer tour video, I was gonna give it to the chickens. And so many of you guys were like, don't do it. And so I think it would be fun if I cooked the cow tongue I know. Keep going. I yes. want to see where you're going. <laughs> and then I'll have that ready because that has to braise for like five hours or something. And I need to find another spoon to taste the. Uh... I won't be here for that live video. <laughs> well, no. So what I what I'm thinking is I would have that cooked, and then you guys would come hang out with me while we make the tortillas because I want to start making homemade tortillas. And I think it'd be fun to make those together and make the salsas together, and then try the tacos together because we're trying chucker for the it's first time true. together. So Karen, it's about 6.25 here. Oh wow, it's already been almost an 6 hour. 6.25 p.m., I should probably clarify. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the slugs were eating everything here too, yes. Oh, that's good. A natural, you're looking for a natural slug repellent. Have you tried crushed eggshells? No, um, I need to try crushed eggshells and I need to try beer. All of you guys said beer works really well too. So this sauce is done. Good. It's a little bit more sour, probably. Like, I, if you guys make this, only add the juice of one lemon. She's <laughs> making me nervous. Let's look at it from afar. And we're talking about accidents in the kitchen. But yeah. Let's try to avoid one. <laughs> oh, 11:25 a.m. on set. It's 11:25 a.m. Saturday in Melbourne, Australia. Oh my gosh. Did you guys want to know how fast of oh, Melbourne? Oh, homemade, homemade tortillas. That sounds good. Okay, so dinner is right. Oh, and then you want to add, so if you have a little bit of juices, which this doesn't have very many, but sometimes when you cook chicken or steak or red meat, you'll have a ton of juice here. You want to add this to your pan sauce, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to do without having these all fall. I'm not going to watch. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Nope. Yeah, this has been fun. Oh, it's, okay, so it's 2226 in Argentina, which means that oh my it gosh. is, but it's two, almost 2.30 in the... It's 10.26. Oh, 10.26, sorry. I'm not good with military time. I'm terrible with military so, time. Yeah, so 10.30 p.m. in Argentina. So, and Pilar, is that, are you, is it Friday or Saturday? Oh, I guess it would be, it's still 
Friday night here, right? You're still in the same, you're in the other America. Yes. So I'm gonna plate this up now. We have the mashed potatoes, sorry, my plates are white. So I have the mashed potatoes here and I've got some peas here. And all of you who don't like your food to touch, look away. Josh, turn around. He, no, he, he doesn't mind it. As long as it's not it's the applesauce. Like, you don't like the sauce. No, yeah. That's different. Let's do, do you want, do you guys want one? Welcome, Travis. Thanks for joining their channel. And shoe rehab. Oh, that's cute. All right, I need to figure out how to dish that. Because I ran my daughter's best friend. I ran out of spoons, you guys. I don't know how that's possible. Josh. Are they all in your office? They're scattered throughout the house. <laughs> yeah, so pull out. I know we say military. Oh, time. I found one! That's so funny, yes. Maybe it's called something else, but I always call it military time. What I call it military time, too. What, what do people call it? Just regular time? Because we usually say AM or PM, but maybe... So what do you... Is that how you usually tell time in Argentina? It makes more sense that it, that's how you would tell time. more sense. The U.S., we, we don't know how to do measurements very well. All right, so I, I just plated, let's see if I can get that in focus. I'm gonna put a oh, little bit of. Wendy, you were so right. Peas and mashed potatoes, like shepherd's pie. Yeah. It's, oh my goodness, that looks so good. So we have the mashed potatoes, the peas, the, I put a dark meat and a light meat, and then we have some lemon basil. So this is gonna be pretty lemony. I hope it's good. I'm sure so I'm gonna plate two, two more of these and then we're gonna do a taste test and you'll see if we like yes. it or not. And just since I don't think that Josh is gonna come on camera. I think the little sneak peek you saw on accident was probably- Yeah, whoever was might here. See, you might see his hands and you might hear, yum, this is great, babe, but you probably won't see him. Whoever was here at the beginning and saw him, that was a treat. Oh, uh, Ruth. Yeah, it's, it's 2.27 a.m. Oh Saturday gosh. morning in the UK, so. That's incredible. Hopefully, hopefully we're helping with your insomnia. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's that's a really tough thing. So it's just a preference about using AM, PM, or, yeah, that's great though. We learn something new every day. All right. Thank you for subscribing, those of you who just subscribed. Oh my gosh, there's new people that came on the live. That's amazing. Okay, so we have one more to, to do. And then... Um, Hi from Australia, Holly. Welcome. Renee, thanks for being here because I don't know how I would do this without you. I don't know. Just, she's pretty good at multitasking. Don't you guys all think that she could probably answer comments, the comments. whip potatoes, tend after gizmo. Like <laughs> She would be able to do all of that. Find the missing spoon. Yeah, so Corinda, is it central time where you are in Texas? Or is that... Yeah, that would be, that would be central time. How do you... Denise is hungry. Yes, I am hungry too. This is just, it is time for dinner. So each plate is getting one piece of dark meat and one piece of light <laughs> meat because we have to taste it to see what we think. But obviously we can eat a lot more than just that. Yes, Wendy, we leftover watch. piece of pizza. You know, sometimes when I watch cooking shows, I have to be eating something so that I can deal with, like if I watch Great British Bake Off, but when I watch Becky's too, I'm usually eating my breakfast. <laughs> So that I can, I'm not getting super hungry. Okay, so what we're gonna do is maybe sit on the other side of the island. I'm gonna pick you guys up again, so hold on. Hopefully you don't get seasick. I'll try to move really slow. Here. Oops, yes. sorry. Oh, and it looks like it's Saturday. It's 11.30 on Saturday in Australia. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So, so we're having brunch with you. So Renee, this is yours. Oh, good. Oh. And there's a placemat there if you want a placemat. Okay, thank you. Oh, so this might be better lighting for you guys to see what we have here. So oh, someone asked where we are. We are in Southwest Washington, just north of Portland, Oregon. Yes, I grew up in Portland, and Josh grew up all over the state, or state, all over the country, and then he kind of settled in. I'm going to do one thing here for you guys, just sorry. We are professional YouTubers. <laughs> You're going to go flying. Okay. I'm gonna come around here. Okay, Josh, do you wanna come try it? <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean. Where is this food? It's right there. It's over, yeah. Can you move the I camera to, back I need a little to get bit? A fork, though. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll bring you a fork. Is that good? Keep going. Excuse me, Josh, you keep going. No problem. Right there. That's right. Yes. I want them to be able to see the food. He will be forever, Joshy. All of you have a Josh's in your life. I'm sure that they are Josh's to you too. Okay. 
Oh my goodness, 3.30 in Hawaii. Oh my gosh. So many people are going to Hawaii right now and I'm so jealous. I've never been to Hawaii before. I'm a little nervous to try this, to be quite honest with you. I'm gonna get my drink. Yes, Kelly, retire here in Portland. I love it here, it's great. It really is the best place. There's no real bit bad bugs. Are you tasting it? I'm waiting for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> you first bite. I know, I want to be polite about nothing. it. Here, come over here so they can see your food. Oh, you can see my food. Okay. Oh, oh okay. yeah. That's a, I think you can see my food. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to try the meat first. I think I need a oh, knife. Yeah, I, I get a knife. Hold on. Let me grab you a knife, too. So I may have overcooked the, the chucker a little bit, but that's better than it being raw. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little tough. Here you go, dear. It's good. Thanks, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? Oh, we do need to do this every Friday night. If Becky cooks for me every Friday night, I'll I'm be here. So down. I'll take that. it. I, I miss having people over. Oh yeah. Okay, so I, I'm actually going to try the meat by itself first. It is. It is a little. I, we don't throw about being undercooked. It's a little tough, but. It's good. It's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. The glaze mm -hmm. is really really good. Mm -hmm. Lemony. Yeah, the sauce is good. Mm. It doesn't have much. Of, I thought it was going to be really gamey. No, it's very chickeny. Very mild flavor, just yeah. like the, the meat itself, the bird. I'm gonna try the dark meat. I'm gonna, I wanna just pick it up like a caveman and do it like off the bone. You should. No, we'll see. Mm. Yeah, you have to watch it later, humbly homesteady. Oh, that's such a mm. cool You're looking to have a hobby farm. Well, it's kind of funny because we live about 20 Josh, minutes away from here. Could you grab a snack? And watch you have eight acres, and it's like, that's my eventual goal to have to have a hobby farm, but not, no animals, just, but I want Becky just to come out and garden out there, so. I would garden out there. Mm -hmm. Then we could have like a huge cornfield and we could do some like bigger things, like mm -hmm. grow some mm. bigger crops. This is really good. And the lemon sauce with the capers. Oh, do you have a napkin? Please try this, this would be good with, good with chicken. I'm gonna grab a snapkin. I'm talking with my mouth full, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I like the dark meat better. I just tried the dark meat, and that has definitely a little bit of a... The, the light meat just doesn't have very much flavor, which I'm kind of surprised by. I the sauce is really good. No, no, the sauce. But I mean just the meat, like when you're just eating the meat. It's very mild, but it just tastes like, it tastes like really mm. lean chicken, kind of. But that I'm sauce is good with the, the basil. Mm. I'm on to the potatoes. Okay, I haven't tried the potatoes yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna mix my potatoes in my. Oh potatoes. yeah, that's good. But then you get the a capers little... are like people don't eat capers enough. They're like little pickle. They're just a burst of flavor. They're but so. They good. look like little mini peas, but they taste really good together. Good job, Becky. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Oh yeah. Cheers. Clunk. That was <laughs> not as satisfying as I was hoping. But anyway. so I have been wanting, like, <clears throat> when we go. Uh, thrifting, we go thrifting a lot. I think that'd be fun too to do a thrifting video with you guys. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you guys would enjoy that. But I was thinking, I've been wanting these champagne glasses that are like the old fashioned, like 50s, not the big fluted ones, but these short, fat, stout ones. <laughs> and I like gold yeah. or brass, and Renee found these for me and surprised me one day. And I love them. It's kind of fun. Oh, so there was a question about Chucker. Actually, so Josh went hunting. Where did you go? Eastern Oregon? Hood River. Hood River? Something no, like that? To go and so oh. he, Josh actually Josh hunted these birds, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so that was and it's really good. Thank you, Josh, for providing for, for putting food on your family. So <laughs> no, exactly. on food on your family. is that an office reference? It's no, a, I don't. It's a familyism. It's a oh. Bushism, I think. I think it's yes from George Bush or something. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> an inside joke. Yes, yes. So I'm really happy about these canned potatoes. That was so easy. They were, they're really good. Yeah. But was it hard to, I mean, it was, was it worth the effort to, to can them? Yeah, they were really easy to can. Literally, to can potatoes, probably one of the easiest things I've ever canned. You wash the potato, and I didn't peel mine because we eat skins on our potatoes all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And you put them in the jar, you put boiling water over them, you put them in the canner for 90 minutes, and then that's it. There's no cooking or just well, wash the potato. Because how many pounds of potatoes did you end up with last year? Sorry, you were just like, like 130. 
So that's, you have to. You have so to we have something. a whole like one of these pantry cupboards is filled with potatoes because I've been kind of intimidated to cook with them. So I thought this would be a good way to force me to to use them. And now that I've used them, I'm like, oh, I can think of a hundred ways to use them because I've only used them like two or three other times. So mm -hmm. this is I'm so happy. good. Yeah, it's really good. I'm happy about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we'll do some thrifting videos together. Oh yeah, I love your haul videos. Oh thanks. I just filmed one uh, yesterday. I broke some of my uh, own grocery shopping rules, so uh -oh. I'll talk to you guys. <laughs> uh -oh. And I went into Target, <laughs> which is always dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I try not to go into Target. Yeah, it's true. Any other questions out there for Becky? We've been on for an hour. Yeah. I can't you believe that. You guys have to go make your own dinner or go to sleep with some of you people. That went by really fast. Yeah, this was fun. Yeah, this was fun. Thanks for hanging out with us, you guys. And now I don't know what I usually say at the end of videos. I think you say have a good day. Have a good day. Can't wait to see you guys <laughs> next time. <laughs> Thanks. This is fun. We'll make dinner together again. Bye, everybody. Nice Bye. to meet you. I don't know how to turn it off. Well, we'll probably do it from here. Oh. Hi, now. <laughs> <laughs>